Hey Facebook, welcome to Playwrights Horizons. I'm Thomas Stella Monica, the assistant to the playwright and director of I Was Most Alive With You. So today, we're gonna go behind the scenes to show you how we're getting ready to begin for our preview performances that start on September 1st. So in I Was Most Alive With You, you'll spend a day in the writing room with two longtime colleagues, Astrid and Ash. Ash lives with addiction as does his deaf son, Knox. Both work really hard to be grateful for everything in life, no matter how challenging things are. Like modern day Job's, Ash and Knox struggle to find hope amid life's trials. The show is going to be performed simultaneously in English and ASL by two complete casts. People working on this production are in and of the community. Like myself, I'm a CODA. A CODA is a child of deaf adults. First, we're gonna show you what's going on in the rehearsal room, and then you're gonna go and meet actors Lisa Emery and Amelia Hensley, who both play the role of Pleasant. After that, you're gonna go downstairs and see the set being loaded in and meet our set designer and our lighting designer. And how we end is totally up to you. So in the comments below, Please let us know if you would rather learn some ASL or take a peek inside our costume shop. Okay, so right now we're going to go into the rehearsal room and see what they're working on. I think it's a group scene from Act One. Come on. So tell me, what did Marcel Marceau do? Hey everyone! Hi. Say hi to Facebook Live. Continue. <laughs> so, tell me, what did Marcel Marceau there tell you in the first three minutes? Private things. We actually skipped the line there. It's, oh, I did most of the talking. I can give you the cue again. So, tell me, what did Marcel Marceau there tell you in the first three minutes? Oh, um, well, I did most of the talking, I think, but, well, he said he'd keep me safe if I followed his suggestions. Like Charles Manson. Isn't that what he told those girls? And what did Farhad tell you about him in the first three minutes? Private things. You can tell them. Go ahead. Why not? Yes. You have to tell us now. He told me he became deaf at six. I'm not deaf. Lost some hearing from an infection. But his parents put him into a regular school because they didn't want to stigmatize him. That's what we did. That's hard without pleasant, right? One of his teachers introduced him to some deaf kids who could sign. Then his parents found out about the cochlear implant, and they got him one, which worked. Oh, wonderful! Well, his deaf friends, they didn't like that. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, but get to the good stuff. I like her. Line and he started taking drugs. And he started taking drugs early. And, 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 and his father started to suspect that he was gay and that he liked men. And he threatened to chop off his head if he ever caught him with a guy. He did? Both his parents and his siblings started to make fun of him. And at school, he was bullied. And of course, the school, they did nothing. So he ran away. He lived on the streets. And he became a sex worker, and social services found him and put him in a foster home where his foster father abused him. What? what, what? Sexually? And then they sent him to a psychiatrist who abused him. Wait. Sexually? And then another foster home where his two older foster brothers abused him. Wait. Sexually? You just like signing that. <laughs> Then he ran away 
Right. We've been shelters where the so. staff often hit on the youngest kids. So. Now, we're gonna go down the hall and we're gonna talk with our actors, Lisa Emery and Amelia Hensley. So, fun fact about Amelia, she was actually in our original production at the Huntington Theater up in Boston in the spring of 2016. So much has changed with this production since then. So let's go check out and see what Elisa and Amelia are doing. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. Great. So we're here with Facebook Live. Hi. Um, so Lisa and Amelia are playing the role of Pleasant. So Lisa, mm -hmm. who is Pleasant? What is Pleasant's role in the family of I Was Most Alive With You? I'd really like to an answer that about who, um, like you said, who is she instead of what she does mm -hmm. and stuff. She's, um, she's just like us. She's <laughs> very witty yeah. and quick and verbally agile and uh, has a great sense of humor. And a lot of that is covering up uh, a very hard time in her marriage is cracking and a lot of that joking is uh, to keep herself and her husband and her husband's writing partner who are very close uh, happy and maybe just oblivious to how I'm really feeling. Yeah, totally. Sorry for slapping my mic. I just, <laughs> you know, totally I just okay. slapped my mic. <laughs> Ah, it doesn't work. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> so, Amelia, you were involved in the original production in Boston. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain what does a shadow cast do? So, the shadow cast signs the entire script so that anyone who uses American Sign Language can come to any performance. We have captions, and the shadow cast will sign the entire show. Our actors really do take on the characters. We're not just interpreting what the characters are saying, but we are the characters. We're actually trying something new with this production in that the shadow cast will be eight feet above the cast that will be on the set. So we will be tracking them from eight feet above them. It's a very new and exciting concept that we're trying here this time. And so each cool. character has a shadow character mm -hmm. instead of having just one or two. Right. Yeah. yeah. So to the both of you, what's it like working on the same character? Do you take things from each other's performances? Do you, how do you learn to be in sync? She's the expert in the being in sync because I don't get, she's standing up there and behind me, I don't get to see, but every once in a while I'll catch something that she does yeah. spontaneously and I, I just love it because it would be what I would, would do. Right. But you, she, you have to answer that. Yep because I can actually see what you're doing, but you can't see what I'm doing. So I get to play around with choices that you make, but it doesn't right. actually work in both directions because you can't see me. Right. And I do take a lot of the character development from you. And sometimes if I'm unsure about a line or if we're getting fed a new line, we'll collaborate on what that line means, mm -hmm. how you deliver the line so that we are in sync. If she th even thinks it's a line that we need, you know, we have a, uh, yeah, we, but my, the very first day of rehearsal, when I got here, uh, you know, you have the meet and greet, and then you have to do photographs and the cast together. And I was watching Amelia because, you know, she's queer. <laughs> and she was, <laughs> she was so antic and so alive and, and so jokey. And her, when she took her pictures, it was just like, <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, that's pleasant. That's her. That's pleasant. That's who she is. It's like I, it, it's a match made in yeah. heaven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and guys, I just have to say that when we're watching, especially these two work, it's so magical. It's it's wonderful. And last question: <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think people should come see our show? I think because it's a a great play. 
great play on so many different levels. And I mean levels, literal levels and biblical and personal and and I don't think anything's ever been done like this. Not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. They've never, it's never been done. I would just say, bam. Yeah. That's bam. why. Bam. Bam. That's right. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. All right, guys. So now we're going to send you downstairs to show you the set. So come on. Let's go see the set. Welcome to the main stage here at Playwrights Horizons. Um, we're, as you can see, loading in on our next main stage show. The show is called I Was Most Alive With You. My name is Samson. I'm the technical director. My name is Arnulfo Maldonado. I'm the set designer. And we're just going to kind of talk about the set and how the process of the build and so forth. Yeah, so this play is challenging in that it's very much a very big cast in this play. And in order to accommodate that many bodies, we sort of had to maximize the full width and basically the full depth of the whole theater. Um, because this is taking place in a writer's room, it was important to really hone in on the vocabulary of that world. Um, and it's also dealing with two casts. So there's a cast on the main floor and a second cast on the top floor, which you can sort of see behind us. Uh, we're in the middle of putting that up. Um, the set takes place in Los Angeles in a writer's room. Uh, the writers, Astrid and Ash, are very much in the middle of trying to come up with their next big um, show. Um, and they're utilizing uh, memories from their life to sort of try to create a new story. Um, but using very personal events in their, their own lives. Um, it's a very big cast, as I mentioned. Uh, it's double cast. The shadow cast is very much mirroring what's happening on the lower level, and they'll be on this second level, which is what I'm calling the sort of script archive library. Um, so there isn't very much, it was important for us to not have a division between the second and the first floor. It all needed to feel unified. Um, so anytime Astrid is sort of downstage right, shadow Astrid is downstage right as well, and very much following the blocking of, of the scene. Um, we're utilizing the vocabulary of the writer's room to sort of transport us to other scenes, other flashbacks. Um, so for instance, uh, we've got a series of fluorescents that will fly in and out to sort of take us into the hospital. The armchair downstage right will double as the hospital bed. Uh, there's a big Thanksgiving dinner scene uh, towards the top of the play. And hence, you would sort of find things in a writer's room. They've made this their own room that they work in you know, when they're not at home. So it very much has a kitchenette. It has its own bathroom. It has a sink. It has several tables for them to sort of plant themselves and just be creative. So utilizing these pockets of the room to formulate a Thanksgiving dinner scene, per se, uh, is, is one of the key things in terms of this design. Well, in the process of building, taking his design and then building it and bringing it up, we had some uh, challenges to deal with. Uh, uh, second floor cantilevers and overhang, and of course, some of the stuff that he has designed to rig and fly and come in. Now, we build all of our uh, stuff in our scene shop in Woodside, Queens, where myself, my assistant technical director, uh, Stuart Parman, and a crew of carpenters come in and we build it all in about three weeks and then we come in here and we start uh, assembling it all as you can see what we're doing now. Um, there is a couple of other um, automation tricks to the show and I don't want to give anything too far away but there is some automation that we do in here like you mentioned uh, the lights fly but there's other pieces. We do a lot of that all in house so that we can maximize as much as we can of the, of the set here and develop as much as possible. So. And the beauty of, of having the shop so close by and then having the build happening in the space. Uh, in addition, we have rehearsal happening upstairs. So there is a, a constant communication between what's happening in the room upstairs and then being able to come down here and sort of look at the progress of the set as well. Plus, it allows us to communicate if there are some changes while they're in the rehearsal space that they can come down and kind of communicate those and develop that as we go and so forth. Um, so. Uh, what happens next uh, is over the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll finish trying to develop this up here with more painting and stuff like that. And then we get prepared to uh, um, start going into tech. Um, and then we get into previews. 
So it's still, we still have a lot to do in a short amount of time that we're, <laughs> we're given, but uh, it, it's coming along actually quite, quite smoothly. I don't want to jinx that, so I have to knock on some wood down here. Uh, but it's, it's going along really, really well. Yeah, and I think that the, the other key thing in this design is that it's very much a big sort of cavernous room. So um, a lot of the detail and realism to the space will be, will be once we start adding set dressing and props. Like that's a majority, that's sort of what brings the room to life in a way. So this sort of, the walls being covered in, in writer's post-it notes and thoughts and headshots, like that all helps to build the world up more. Um, to bring us into the to, to the world of the writer's room. That's actually my favorite part is the finished work and the fine tuning and all the set tracing and so forth. I want to thank you for joining us here on the set and I want to send it off to Annie, the lighting designer. Hi, my name is Annie Wigand. This is my name sign. And I'm the lighting designer for I Was Most Alive With You here at Playwrights Horizons. Right now, we're in rehearsal. The lights have all been hung as of about a week or two ago. The set's being loaded in, which is exciting. You can see it happening behind me. By Friday, hopefully the set is all finished. I'll come back to focus the lights. Working with a team of electricians. They'll be up on ladders above and I'll be standing on the stage and we'll be moving the lights, focusing the lights. Every light needs to be focused, pointed at a specific location on the stage. Once the focus is finished, we'll start tech rehearsals. So tech, what is tech? What does that mean? Tech is everything, everyone coming back together. All of us designers, we've been working on the vision of the show for a year now. It's all been in our heads. So we've been making drawings and diagrams and all sorts of visual representations, but tech is a special moment when everything finally comes back together. The actors are all in costume, the sound cues go in, the lights are all on, everything gets put together to make the final production. It will take time to make sure every moment comes together. Lights and sound and projection of the captions we'll do it again and again to make sure it looks right. The set is bi-level. And that's for several reasons. The main point is to separate our family and our shadow actors. So my job as a lighting designer, it's a double challenge. Obviously, we want the whole world of the set to feel connected, but the second level has some special considerations. We need to make sure the signing is visually clear. But even so, we still need to make sure that the audience understands where we are in the story. Are we at night? Is it a nighttime scene? Is it the morning? Are we in a bedroom? Or the workroom? Are we in a memory? Or are we in the present? So really, while the first level is focused on the family, we have to remember that their location, the setting changes and moves, and the timeline jumps forward and backward too. So the lighting has to support that. But sometimes visibility becomes a challenge, given all that. We need to make sure that we can see the signing above, but that it remains visually connected to the action below. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to share my thoughts and ideas. So now I'm happy to send it back upstairs. Welcome back guys. The results are in from our Facebook and Instagram poll. So we're going to teach you some ASL. And here to help me is Amelia. First word, Playwrights Horizons. Oh, 
I was most alive with you. <laughs> Ticket. Sober. And last but not least, grateful. <laughs> we are so grateful to you for watching our live feed. Thank you so much. On behalf of the whole I Was Most Alive With You team at Playwrights Horizons, we thank you and we hope to see you soon.